more commentary here from the RLA Future Renting North Conference in Manchester and I'm joined by policy manager John Stewart and John what an amazing day these conferences they seem to just be a kind of melting pot of, of everything that is on landlords minds yeah. well so much going on in the sector you almost uh, have to ask what are we going to leave off the agenda for discussion now, there's some really big areas that, that we haven't been able to get on the agenda today and the sessions we've had have been very very packed so uh, yeah it's been a really busy day there's been some really challenging discussions and some really informative sessions uh, so that landlords and agents know what to expect going forward in the private rented sector. So great to have the Mayor of Greater Manchester here, Andy Burnham, to allow landlords to engage and ask him questions, uh, you know, up on the stage. Really, really interesting to see landlords' reactions uh, to him. And um, there was a lot of emotion amongst landlords. It, you know, they, they didn't take his uh, presentation uh, as well as you might ex have hoped? Well, it was always going to be a challenging session. Um, Mr Burnham made uh, housing and homelessness the centre of his election campaign. We know that the Labour Party nationally have some very challenging uh, policies in the private rented sector, if not some downright daft ones. Um, so we, we, we did expect challenge today and that certainly came uh, from Andy Burnham. But I think the important message is that he does want to work with the sector and he knows that he can only deliver his ambitions for housing and private housing in particular in Manchester if he works with landlords, works with agents, works with, works with the sector to go forward. And he made that clear today that that's the way he wants to go. He doesn't want to impose things in the sector. He doesn't want to dictate. Uh, and if we can work together, then perhaps we'll get something that suits both the good landlords who join organisations like the RLA and come to events like this and the tenants who do deserve good quality safe and secure housing. I think it's actually very healthy uh, to have somebody such as Andy uh, answer questions and be challenged by the landlord community. Well, absolutely. It was very much a two-way street today. Um, Andy was very good. He took far more questions uh, than he was scheduled to take. He overran his slot, but it shows he does want to engage very directly. And he's not scared to have a difference of opinion with people. Um, and landlords did get the chance to, to query his statistics, query some of his assertions and, and challenge back. And you do need that dialogue but what's important is what comes out of that dialogue what we don't want is to leave on an adversarial or sour note what we need to do now is take the comments from Andy Burnham take the comments from our members from the floor go to a meeting with Andy Burnham and, and thrash out a, a solution that, that works for everyone now he did mention that he's thinking of launching his um, good landlords uh, voluntary scheme um, I have to play devil's advocate and say, are the rogue landlords going to be interested in joining? And if they don't, what enforcement is there going to be? Well, this is where the, the RLA has a pivotal role to play. We believe that good landlords should be allowed to self-regulate outside the, of local authority enforcement, that uh, should be able to join a scheme, uh, have complaints against uh, that landlord dealt with by the scheme in the first instance, have alternative dispute resolution and mediation in place um, to avoid co costly court challenges and disputes uh, and resolve uh, tenant landlord issues that way and return for joining a scheme and signing up to a co-regulation scheme. Uh, those landlords would get substantial discounts on local licensing schemes where they exist and as I say be, be by and large left alone by the council to get on with their business because they are delivering good quality, safe, secure legal homes. And that would free up local authority resources to go after those rogue and criminal landlords who drag the whole sector down, the people providing overcrowded or substandard properties. And those are the people that Andy Burnham wants out the sector, the people that our members want out the sector. They provide unfair competition and they allow uh, campaigning organisations to tarnish the whole sector and, uh, and really create that, that whole narrative around about private renting, that it's high cost, low quality, damaging to health um, and you know we really have to find a way of ending that narrative and if that means working with uh, senior local politicians like Andy Burnham then that's something we're prepared to do. Absolutely and I think Andy's uh, presentation sort of seeged in very nicely with the whole theme of the conference because Andy was very much talking about the future and what uh, things can be set in place now to create a, a better private rented sector and trying 
different things that perhaps haven't been tried before. And that's really the whole theme of the conference. It's not just what landlords are facing now, but what we have to be prepared for coming down the line. Yes. Uh, so there's a lot. Oh, there's an awful lot coming down the line. And some of that we still have a chance to shape. So things like the, the fees ban is still a draft bill. There's an opportunity to have some influence there. The government is currently consulting on landlord redress and a requirement for landlords to join a scheme. We'll have a real opportunity there to put forward alternative proposals. Um, uh, and of course, they're consulting in a new housing court, which is one thing that could really help both landlords and tenants in the sector. What landlords need when it comes to possession is uh, faster access to justice and what tenants need is a system that allows them to get the, the property repairs done, the condi property conditions improved without relying on a local authority that is under-resourced and simply takes too long to respond to complaints. So housing courts could be a real uh, benefit to both landlords and tenants uh, and at the moment the court service isn't fit for purpose, it isn't delivering for landlords, it isn't delivering for tenants who are after repair, it may be delivering for those tenants who are looking to live in, in properties beyond their, their, their uh, eviction period, but uh, court reform is so crucial, we think, to the sector going forward. And that's before we even look at all the other uh, non-governmental influences on the sector, um, prop tech, artificial intelligence, cryptocurrencies, um, you know, there's all sorts of apps and gadgets uh, being sold out there at the moment um, to help landlords do their business, and some of them will turn out to be brilliant and some of them would turn out to be dud. Um, uh, so there's a bit of a minefield there for landlords. Do they, do they take the plunge early, be early adopters and hope to get that one system that, that really delivers for them? Or do they hold back and let others take that risk? Uh, just give us a quick snapshot of what uh, you're working on in your day-to-day -day world. There's so much to work on at the moment. Uh, the, the just we, we are getting a barrage of legislation at the moment. Uh, clearly tax remains a priority. The yeah. government have made it quite clear they're not going to backtrack on either stamp duty or a mortgage interest relief. We will keep banging the drum. We will keep telling them that they're wrong. Um, it may take uh, landlords exiting the sector. It may take those rent increases that, that, that have been predicted and that may take one or two years to come through uh, before the government government admit they're wrong but, but we will keep pressing for change there but in the meantime we're asking the government to consider mitigation uh, to look at other measures uh, in the tax system that would encourage the sort of behaviour that the government wants for example energy efficiency improvements, uh, increased home ownership so capital gains, uh, relief for sale to uh, sitting tenants or first time buyers so we're working very hard on tax at the moment. Obviously energy and environment is a big area of work and again uh, minimum energy efficiency standards. Um, we've done a good job of making land Landlords aware that the minimum standard is E for new tenancies uh, this year and 2020 for all tenancies. We need to work hard to ensure that landlords are aware that this is a progressive target uh, and if they can get the properties uh, up to uh, a D or a C rating then they really should be thinking about doing that now instead of waiting five, ten years time when, it, when it's compulsory. Uh, we, we're also looking at regulation enforcement. We believe that councils are either under-resourced or, or under-interested in, in enforcement uh, the, the current regulations. Uh, we're seeing a, a real explosion in, in life licensing at the moment at local level where there's no real evidence that licensing is improving the lot of tenants and it simply puts a cost again on the good landlords who will always uh, come forward to stay on the right side of law and pay the fees. So uh, we're campaigning on licensing at the moment. Um, as I say, it, it is constant. We're looking at the, the, the fees ban at the moment. Uh, we're keeping an eye on, on rent controls. The Labour Party continues to threaten uh, rent control, which we simply believe is a non-starter for the sector. It just goes on and on and on and on. We've touched on the landlord redress. We're looking at, at court reform. Um, I think we're going to need a two-day conference next time. There's yeah. so much. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, one of the criticisms uh, of, of the landlord association, uh, of, of uh, people that are critical of landlord associations, uh, one retort to them may be, imagine what it would be like if we weren't here, because you've made some significant uh, inroads into uh, lessening the impact of certain re regulation and so on. I think, you know, any landlords that don't believe that landlords associations do a good job, they should try what it would be like without you. Yeah, we've made some significant uh, progress on, on right to rent. We, we managed to get a, a landlord defence put into the bill before it was passed and we're now looking at a judicial review uh, jointly with the Camden Law Centre and the Joint Council for the Welfare of Immigrants. Uh, we have worked hard, particularly in the area of welfare reform, both on the process side with civil servants in the Department of Work and Pensions and on the political 
side. We're seeing some policy changes from the government and we've got a really good relationship now with civil servants who are really keen to ensure the rollout is as smooth as possible. Now we're here today running a workshop to get direct landlord feedback and we know they're going to be going out to other landlord forums and meetings around the country repeating that exercise. So we're getting real progress there. Um, you know, uh, but uh, you know, we have to be clear that um, you know, it, policy is the art of the possible and if a government has its face set against something, um, there's only one way of changing that and it's usually a change of government and at the moment um, you know, we, we have a, a Conservative government that is set firm on tax, it's set firm on the agent's fees ban, it looks to be set firm on things like redress um, and we have to ask um, you know, what, what can we do to change that? We need people to contact their MPs, we need to build up case studies, we need to make resources available to our members. We can't do it all on our own, we do need feedback from our members and we also have to have half an eye on the next election uh, and will we see a Labour government which could see even more change for the sector uh, and could be even harder to influence than the current government. Quite uncertain times for landlords actually and I think one of the things that um, this conference and this environment provides is to you know, give landlords some knowledge that they know that they're not alone and that there are that there is strength in numbers. Yeah. Well, the social and networking element of the conference is really important. Um, it, it's always helpful to come to an event and discover that someone else has the same problem or issue you, or better still, someone else has solved the problem or issue that you have in a way that you hadn't even thought of. So that, that interaction, that, that, that chance to chat over coffee or over lunch, um, the chance to, to meet service providers um, who, you know, and find out what new things are on the market that can help you with your business, it, it, it's all important. Yes, the, the policy work is really important. It's great to hear from, from political figures like Andy Burnham, but actually some of the best bits of conference, I've no doubt, will come from the conversations that have been had over a coffee cup and a cupcake. I agree, and I think one of the great things about this event is that it's like dropping a stone into a pond. The ripples are going to spread out through these videos, through conversations, through increasing dialogue. Andy Burnham, as you said, wanted to continue the dialogue, which is very, very positive. So this, I think this event is really, really important, and um, I think everybody's going to have a fantastic day here so thanks very much for joining me John and uh, let's see what else develops over the rest of the afternoon. Thanks very much.